What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here, and welcome to vlog number 74. I've got some pretty good stuff for you guys today. We're back around to heavy triples on the strip press, and I'm up to 170 pounds for this training session. I paired those up with some medicine ball slams, and then I finished up the session with a little bit of benching and rowing. This was my very first session using 170 pounds on the strict presses after two weeks of working with 167 and a half pounds. The jump from 167 up to 170 felt like a big one, but I did some pretty good work here in my first session with it. I managed four triples and then a double on the fifth and final set. Now, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it for you guys and tell you that in the next week, I actually managed to not only hit all five triples successfully with 170 pounds but on the fifth set i actually hit four fucking reps so that was a big rep pr in a pretty fatigued state which is some good progress on a lift like this if we compare where i am here so far with my results from my last block of training you'll see that i've made some pretty good strides here in the last couple months my last cycle ended with 170 pounds but the difference is at that time, I was struggling to grind out tough doubles with it. Now, I'm up to hitting repeat triples with the same weight and even a rep PR of four reps while fatigued. So the slow and steady approach seems to be working here. And while I'm very clearly nearing the end of the block of training at this point, I don't think I even want to test the lift, to be honest, because I don't really care. I'm way stronger now, and I know it. I've never repped weights like this on the strip press before, and I don't need a max single to tell me that. And the thing about testing is, it can be a curse. Even if you succeed with that big weight you've been wanting, if it's a tough lift, which it's invariably gonna be, it's gonna require time to recover from. And that's gonna potentially kill all of your momentum. And I simply don't wanna take that chance. I've built up so much momentum at this point, and things are going so great, I'd rather just smoothly and seamlessly transition into working on the push press and chase PRs there without the hitch of having to start with super light weights or take a deload week because I killed myself to strict press 200 pounds overhead just to impress you guys. And this is something that becomes more and more clear to me the longer I do this. Testing can be great fun, but it comes with a heavy price, and that results in a lot of lost training time. But for me, at this stage, the process of training itself is almost more satisfying and fulfilling than testing my lifts is. And frankly, it's way more productive as well. And I have no plans to compete anytime soon, so why bother? That's not to say heavy singles don't have a place in training, because you guys know I love doing some heavy singles. But training with singles isn't the same thing as testing a lift. A true maximum effort is way more brutal and simply cannot be repeated. So anyway, the plan for now is once this all comes to a head, just jump straight into the push press and shift my focus onto that for the next training block or two. This was a very solid session though, and actually the next couple weeks that follow it were damn solid as well. I was able to tap into a very aggressive and productive mental state for these training sessions, which really helped me to push past old boundaries and break into new territories when it comes to my strength. And with these medicine ball slams, that's very important as well. I've mentioned it before, but with these, it's almost even more important to be super aggressive and go all out with every slam, or you're just not really doing anything that's worthwhile, but just kind of going through the motions. If you aren't producing maximal power here, then you really just shouldn't even bother. I'm not going to tell you guys my secret that I use here to get myself angry enough to tap into that ultra aggressive state because you'll just think I'm crazy, but you should really find some sort of cue of your own that helps you to tap into a different mental state when you do these. I'll give you a clue though. You shouldn't really be there anymore when you do these. If you're fully cognizant of yourself with every slam, then I guarantee you that the aggression isn't really there. 
But if you can make yourself see red, then you'll know you're on to something here. That's when this exercise becomes productive. After the main portion of the workout, I moved on to some bench pressing with no leg drive, i.e. a Larson press. I've been calling it a no leg bench press since before I knew it had a name. Uh, I don't execute it in quite the same way as you generally see it done, but it gets the job done all the same. I really like this as a variation though, and to be honest, I like it more than trying to bench with leg drive and an arch. It just makes it feel smoother to me overall, and after a while, I think it really starts to improve my form, whereas my usual bench press just seems to degrade over time. But anyway, I'm doing these twice a week right now after my main overhead work for the day. This session is usually a 5x5, five five, but sometimes I'll go up to 6 or even 7 reps on a couple of the sets if things are feeling good. And then the other session is a lighter session where I'm starting off with 5x8 with a given weight and working my way up to 5x10 with that same weight before increasing it. So that's that double progression idea that I described to you guys a few weeks ago. For the 5x5, five five, it's a little bit less structured. I'm just using the five reps per set as my minimum guideline, and if it's feeling good, then I go a little above and beyond. But I make sure to keep the weight the same for at least two sessions here before I increase it. I'm mostly using two and a half pound jumps in weight on both days because again, I'm not in any rush and things have improved quite well these last few weeks. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing with it. Now the rows here, these are less of a true seal row, which is generally done while lying belly down on a flat bench with the legs fully extended behind you. And so it's more of a chest supported row variation, but that's too long to put in the title, so I just called it a seal row anyway. These aren't bad overall, but for me the setup is kind of a pain in the ass, and given the structural limitations of my bench, the range of motion is a little bit too short but they do give me quite a contraction of my middle back, so there is that. Not really sure how long this is gonna last though. This is the kind of thing that I have a tendency to get real lazy with after a few weeks, and then it just kind of disappears from the program without a trace. Rows just don't get my dick hard, and that makes them real easy for me to skip. Anyway, on that note, I think that is about all I've got for now, guys. Please be sure to like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. I hope everyone has a happy new year. Make sure you stay safe, don't get too hammered, and try to at least train sort of hard tomorrow. I'll catch you guys next time. Easy.